of the Real Wrestling Show. Yeah. Uh, we're going to do that again because it's a new setup. So, welcome to another episode of the Real Wrestling Show. Dash vlog. And we are the Real Wrestling Show for what we believe to be the real. Re- we are the Real Wrestling Show talking about what we believe to be the Real Wrestling Show, which is A E W. So, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, above 15, that is, we proudly bring to you the greatest wrestling blog, tag team champions, and best friends in the world. We got. The bald bastard Big Z, and we've also got plenty of luxurious, sexy hair for Tom and Aldozy. And together, we make up the real wrestling show. Yes, bloggy. Oh, and what we do on here is a rundown of Dynamite, a rundown of Rampage, a rundown of Collision, a rundown of their next show that they'll create, a rundown of their pay per view. Then they'll have a pay per view in a show. Then they'll have another fucking like Money in the Belt match. And too much wrestling, man. But yeah, that's what we do. We do a rundown of all of AEW stuff that they have now put in out on TV in the first four years of fucking being around. Feels like WWE already. But not complaining. Not complaining. Very complaining. Uh, starting off, the Dynamite show, we had Mox versus Ishii. It's a pretty good match. <coughs> um, yeah, it was a, I was a bit not shocked by the fact that Ishii was fighting Mox, but it was like, well, why is Mox fighting Ishii all of a sudden? Do you know what I mean, considering... But that box, there's Japan as well. So yeah, I think it's the Eddie so Kingston, big. isn't it? Uh, I think it's the Eddie Kingston link. Yeah, obviously, that, that as well. But it does make sense because, obviously, Mox is in the in the ranks of the Japan League as well, so... Yeah. It just it just didn't make much sense for me, personally. It, it was just... Maybe not made, made sense. It makes sense because of the link with Eddie Kingston, but... The fact that it was just kind of like, oh yeah, Mox is going to fight Ishii. It's like, what? What? I think, I I think what missed you is it's the opener. If it, if it wasn't the opener, it would have like melted into the show a bit better. Do you know what I mean? But because Maybe it was the opener. advertisement for it or something like that. Yeah. But it, it just feels like AEW are not advertising stuff a lot now. Do you know what I mean? And then when it comes it's, to it's always the way though this time of year, mate. The forbidden door time is always that's like the year. Like, do you know what I mean? It's where it's. No, oh, but it's like I'm always guessing there. No, well, what's the storyline there? Or oh, what's the link? They're not telling me the link. That's what I want from a TV program. I want to understand the link. Unless it's like, who done it? Do you know what I mean? I, I wanna yeah. I want that continuity with wrestling. It's like I know I'm dawdling a little bit here now before we actually start this match, but look at Impact Wrestling when they love a storyline and then all of a sudden someone leaves and then they just don't finish anything. They just stop the storyline, off it fucks, and you have to you have to figure it out on your own luck. And it's like, ah, oh, right, okay. Didn't really enjoy that. Like, what, to be fair, what was that? To be fair, at least Impact would go out. Right, we're just going to throw you into the dark world. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> like, there's that stuff we like on. <laughs> yeah. I agree. But they never did, though. They never did. But yeah, just throwing matches together for the sake of throwing matches together at the last minute is it's starting to piss me off a little bit, like, to be honest. But uh, anyway, getting into the match. Uh, starting off, chops and elbows and whatnot back and forth to start off. Uh, BCC stalking Ishii. Eddie comes out to make the save, basically stopping Claudio, and then he stands. Claudio just stares at Eddie Kingston right the way through the match. Yeah, that was. Uh, cool. Mox, Mox elbows absorbed by Ishii, then knocks down Mox with one. Uh, more elbows back and forth. Uh, got pile driver by. Got, yeah, got pile driver by Mox gets two count. Uh, they suplex each other. They knee each other, and then they both fall. It's a pretty cool part of the match. Headbutt off. Headbutt back and forth. <laughs> Have a bit of outdoors. Uh, DDT Mox dumps Ishii on his head. Ishii sliding Laria gets a two count. Paradigm shift gets a two count. Curb stomp and a paradigm shift for the finish of the match. It was a lot of chops, a lot of elbows, a lot of like, I'm the bigger boy. No, I'm the bigger boy. And it, you know, it comes across well. Uh, good match. Man of the match, John Moxley. Yeah, I agree, John Moxley. For three moments. Yeah, it was a good match. But like like I said, just because it's got a small number doesn't mean that it was a shit match. It's just... It's what it is, isn't it? It's our yeah. scoring system. Exactly, mate. After the match, Mox kisses uh, his hand and taps Ishii. And Eddie and Mox talk trash. Yeah. And that was that. So, yeah, what a bad opener. Next up, we had Rene promo in the car park. Talking to MJF and Adam Cole. Adam Cole pulls up. 
in a car, then MJF pulls up pretty fast. Uh, he's talking to... Roderick Strong? No. No, this is where uh, MJF rocks up and he says, oh, you know, you're my idol, blah, 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 I looked up to you. MJF says that they can run the place, let's chill out for the weekend. Has a bit of a laugh. And brings out a better than you, baby t-shirt. <laughs> which is a pretty cool, pretty cool plug. Yeah. Um, good. N- nice little segment, man. Nice little segment. I-, I do like the comedy bits from MJF, even though like he's the bad guy. But when he plays that fool, he does it so well. Like. A bit like Kurt Angle. Yeah. Yeah, with less... Less... Uh, less goofiness. Less- Less professionalism, let's put it that way. Next up, we had a promo with Renee again. She gets around, doesn't she? Uh, Eddie and BCC, Mock says all this over Shakara to Eddie Kingston about not liking Claudio. Ed says it meant something to me. Renee tells Ed to fix the problem or else. And she storms off. So we are going to see Mox and Renee kind of running yeah. together in AEW, which... It's time they've like kind of... Do you want to see it? Um, yeah, I kind of do a little bit because it's there. And people like them pretending they're not married doesn't make any sense. I hate it when WWE do it, so I wouldn't. But not, like, what I was saying, not in, I want them to acknowledge it, but I don't want it to be in the storylines full time. Yeah. It's like but, we all know that they're married and they don't, they don't say any crimes about him. When she's questioned about John, she answers. And same with John with Rennie. But I don't really want to see him running together. You yeah. know? Maybe we bump, uh, bump into each yeah, other's past every like, now and again. So She'd be like, like "Fucking hell, why are you bleeding so heavy, like Jimmy?" Or whatever. I, think, you know? I, I like the way it's because it's Eddie Kingston. Like, I hope they do it like this. Like, for example, if me and you had a big argument, yeah, and your message would be like, "Boys, shut the fuck up! You're arguing over something stupid," and then like bringing us back together type thing. Like, yeah, well, hopefully that. that's a real life, that, like Jimmy. That could be pretty cool, but yeah, I don't want to. I agree with you. I don't want to see no mainstay storylines between Rennie and John Moxley. Yeah. I think it'll take a hell of a lot away from Rennie. Yeah, because yeah. she doesn't need Mox. She's a star on her own. Exactly. Uh, next up, we have a promo. Omega Osprey recap. Omega says, it's not over. He'll be back. Dun, dun, dun. Um, yeah, one a bad promo. Then we had a match. <clears throat> Second one of the night, which is probably about 25 minutes into the show. Wow. Uh, Orange Cassidy, Keith Lee, and El Jiju Vikingo. I can't remember the beginning part of his name. Uh, versus 2.0 and Daniel Garcia. 2.0 being Blockhead and the skinny headed one. Uh, pretty good match this was. Uh, six spring in Hurricanrana by Vikingo. Orange Cassidy takes the comb from uh, Pinhead. And then play, pretends to break it, puts it in his pocket. Orange cast the surfboard to Vikingo, uh, and Vikingo stomp off the top. That was a nice combo. Vikingo taken out on the apron by Fathead. Uh, I'm not sure what the names are. Fathead and Pinhead. Uh, strong Irish to... And something Maynard. Matt Maynard. Uh, Fathead. Yeah, block, Blockhead and Pinhead's good with me. Strong Irish... Whip to a kick by Blockhead. Don't know what the fuck that means. Vikingo bouncing off the ropes with his shoulders into the Inseguni. That was pretty cool. Terrible spot by 2.0. It was like they glitched on the Irish. Did you see that? But he goes to throw him and he just stands there and goes. Yeah. And then he just kind of like touches his back and goes back into motion. A little bit like uh, AEW Fight Forever. Fight Forever. I was going to say the same apparently. Even though I haven't played it. Yeah. Yeah. Double team by 2.0. Step up elbow, Keith Lee crossbody into the ring. Danny Garcia standing on Keith Lee. Keith Lee stands up with Danny Garcia on his back. Uh, in some of the clothesline, and then a double close. Uh, no, then a clothesline to 2.0. Vikingo dive hitting Keith Lee, bit of a dodgy landing. Keith Lee using Vikingo as a weapon to 2.0 on the outside. That was pretty cool, just swinging him around like a like a battling ram. Yeah, Keith Lee. Bringing Vikingo up to the middle rope and then he does a moonsault and obliterates Pinhead. Literally just fucking destroys him on the landing. Uh, power driver by Daniel Garcia gets two count. Power slam by Keith Lee gets the finish. It was a good match. 
Viking Oak stood out like a sore thumb. Do you know what I mean? He was awesome, as he always is. He's yeah. a man of the match. And I give it a big eight. Along with seven and Viking Oak as well. Yeah, big numbers, man. Good. Uh, it's always got big numbers when Viking goes in it. Yeah, he's, he's a phenomenal <laughs> wrestler. The only thing is, because I don't think he speaks English, does he? I'm not sure. Well, they haven't promoted him, so I don't know what his promo skills are like. So hopefully, if he's a duck promo, then get him. But I haven't seen his promos to know if he's if if they signed him permanently, would he just be another stunt monkey? He'd have a voice. He'd have he'd have someone talk for him, wouldn't he? Well, yeah, you know, I suppose so. Get a Andrade or something to talk for him. He can speak. Get a El El Edio. He can talk. Uh, no. Is there any of the foreigner guys that could represent Vikingo that can actually speak English? Alex. Any... Alex. Alex. What's his name? Yeah. Yeah. You've thought for some reason. Cause I, yeah, because I couldn't think of his name. I was like, Alex. Alex. No. <laughs> well, that's why this screen's stalled. Oh, fucking it's subliminal. If it's my brain. Anyway, well. Let's move on anyway, man. He is a, he is a sick wrestler. But everybody, everybody looked pretty good in this, except for... Um, Pinhead, two point oh, and Pinhead particularly because he just he kind of glitched out. The big, big punk. Next up, we had a promo. Uh, Bucks and Hangman open challenge. Dark Order accept the challenge and have a pop of Hangman. Then we had a promo. Brian Danielson, Okada recap. Jungle Boy hitting hook. We both promos, and then we had another promo with Rene backstage. Jungle Boy has nothing to do with it. It's Jericho and Sammy G. Uh-huh. Uh, Jericho says he's the pain maker. Blah, blah, blah. Then we have the Dark Order versus the Bucks and Hangman, otherwise known as the Hung Bucks. Um, it was an okay match as far as quite a low number for me. Uh, Hangman not wanting to fight most of the way through the match, and the reason it's got a low number is because it was more storyline than anything else. Yeah. Uh, Hung the elbow to Hangman. Uno takes out Hangman on the apron. Bucks double. Dive off a corner to the outside. Always pretty good. Hangman still doesn't want to fight. Double team combo by the Bucks. Nick kicks Matt by accident. Ref gets... Uh, ref does an assist in neckbreaker for Uno. He chucks a leg to the ref. Uh, yeah. Uno can off the apron. DDT by Alex Reynolds. Stomp by John Silver. Dark order double team combo. Pin gets two count. Buckshot countered by John Silver. Which is quite nice to see like one of the littlest guys in AEW counted in quite you know, such a big move like Jermaine. They look good. Like. Uh, he's believable. Even though he's little, he's a believable. You still believe he can beat anyone, man. Absolutely, man. Uh, BTE trigger, dead eye, buckshot for the finish of the match. I went with Evil Uno, man of the match, and just the single moment. Uh, match action, man of the match, and again, just the single moment. After the match, Hangman shows respect for Dark Order, BCC attack with chairs. Eddie makes a save. Claudio attacks Ed. Mox says, Blood and Guts, 19th of July, and the Dark Order just watch as it all happens. Yeah. Those bastards. I thought it was cool. Yeah, it was. I thought it was, uh, yeah. You hear it? Join the bastard order. But uh, next up, we had a promo video. And I would probably say, go, go, go. And it was an Owen Hart tournament hype. Uh, then we had a backstage promo, and it was Adam Cole, Rod, and MJF. Uh, Roderick Strong and Adam Cole are talking, first of all. He's telling that he can't trust MJF, and he says, yeah, I know, but he don't watch the videos back, blah, 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 blah. He can say what he wants. Um, MJF says, let's get out of here. And then Rod says, don't trust MJF. And then Adam Cole gets in a car, and they're going off and have their jollies. Which I think they're going to end up being becoming pals. Adam Cole's going to turn bad guy, fuck everyone over, and then he'll fuck over MJF at the end. Um, then we had another promo, which was Jungle Boy says that the fans have ruined this song by singing to it. That's a good way to, a good heel thing to say. Uh, says he's banging the hottest chick or bitch in the place, being Anna J, which I wouldn't say she's the hottest chick in the place. She's pretty smoking. Sky Blue is. Uh, says 
that he's jealous of Hook's belt, essentially. Didn't say he was jealous of Hook's belt, but he basically said that the fact that he's parading around with a belt while Jungle Boy can't win one is a bit in your face and all that. So, yeah, sounds jealous. Calls Hook a fraud, uh, says that he wants the FTW title, and the next time that he sees Hook, he's going to smash him in the face. And then what do you know? Hook's music plays, out comes Hook, off runs Jungle Boy like a biatch. So, yeah, it was um, yeah, it was pretty good by Jungle Boy. It's like, I find him hard to believe when he's being angry because Jungle Boy just comes across like a boy, really. It's like, you know, it's the boy and his dinosaur. It's, that is still there. It's going to be, I think it's going to take a little bit longer to actually get rid of that kind of stigma of Jungle Boy is uh, Jungle Boy. You know, he, I know they're transitioning from Jungle Boy to Jack Perry, blah, 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 blah. But people are still going to remember him for that. You know, he's got a long, his long, like, quippy hair, all curly, stands out like a sore thumb. Everybody recognises Jurassic Express for what they were. People loved Marco Stunt with Jungle Boy and, you know, everything like that. So it's going to be hard for him to transition. So when I see him as a bad guy, I do kind of be like, uh, I, I want to get behind you, but I can't quite get behind you. But he, I think he will transition well, hopefully. But now we have <clears throat> the main event of Dynamite's evening, which was Darby and Sting versus Jericho as the Painmaker and Sammy Guevara, which is a great match. Got to be fair. Um, a reasonable number in this. Uh, early on, Sting and Jez in a ring, uh, in each other's bats. Sammy G, it's a cutter to Darby. Darby basically walking across the ring to take it. That was pretty shit. Uh, Sting into the guardrail, Darby into the guardrail, chair to Darby, Darby into the steps, Darby flip over the steps and then hitting the guardrail on his back and into the crowd. That was pretty cool. Uh, fighting in the crowd, fan holding Darby for Sammy G chop, and he lets him do it, and then he then he like pulls out of it, which I thought was a pretty nice spot. Um, suplex on concrete. Chairs to Jericho. Jericho forces, uh, forces a sign down Sting's mouth, which looked like a front cover of an old magazine, which if anybody, if I was worth money, and they put it on the front of that sign, you're an idiot anyway, but for Jericho to rip it up and it was worth money, you're still an idiot. Uh, cut it off the guardrail by Sammy. That was quite nice. Uh, Miss Coffin dropped to the outside. When I say Miss Coffin drop, I think he actually did connect with someone, but then he just kind of Slips past them and it and it's the floor. Uh, Spanish on the guardrail. Nope. Splash on the guardrail by Sting. Table set up far, far too far away. Anybody in their right mind would see that was too far away. Um, Darby climbs a ladder. Sting then climbs a ladder and says, "No, no, I got this shit." And then he proceeds to jump off the ladder, and as he almost connects the first table because in all fairness the tables were far 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 too far away as he connects sammy g kind of braces a little bit lifts up his knee and stings teeth are no more and basically as he goes whack you see him go fuck like that and then he holds his mouth uh medical are on him for i don't know five minutes something like that but tough old bastard gets back up carries on wrestling <laughs> um Darby skateboard to Jericho off the corner, gets a two count. Uh, ladder chucked at Darby times two. Jericho into the ladder, and then you can clearly see that he undoes his glove and cuts his forehead, which I'm getting a bit pissed off with as well. Um, skateboard to a coffin drop in Darby by Jericho, and then he hits a Judas effect. Boston to Sting, when they say it's the walls of Jericho, the lion, lion tamer, it's not. It's the Boston Crab. Uh, to Sting, and then he grabs a bat and hits Jericho across the head, and you hear that, Dunk! which is pretty cool. Welcome back! Uh, Cold Breaker to Sting gets two counts, Scorpion Death Drop gets two counts, and then a Scorpion, Scorpion Death Lock for the finish of the match. So yeah, Sting and Darby win. Sting's teeth lose. Sting man of the match just because he's a crazy fucking lunatic. And I had eight moments. Yep, I had Sting man of the match and I had a whopping 
sad moments. Right. Yeah. I don't like when them tables were set up. It was like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. I mean, like, like when Helen, like before I watched it and Helen didn't see it, like, and she went, oh, well, so, so, so. I said, no, no, Jeff Hardy couldn't have made that. RBD in his prime could not have made that. You oh. know what I mean? Like an RBD was known for like jumping full size across the ring. Do you know what I mean? Jumping off a ladder yeah. that was two foot inside the ring at the point where he jumped off, or at least a foot. There's no spring behind there. Do you know what I mean? He was never going to reach it. Like, do you know what I mean? How he didn't hurt himself more is unbelievable. Unbelievable. It's awesome. That's why. He is awesome, mate. But like how he didn't jar his lower back, how he didn't do his knee in, like how he's not got how he's not got a face that looks like Predator when it goes. Do you know what Someone I mean? Someone has to wrestle. He didn't do too bad, did he? <laughs> yeah. And uh, <laughs> people are saying, oh, it's, a, it's the right fuck you to WWE. Which it kind of is, like, do you know what I mean? You know? But in all fairness, AEW is a big fuck you to WWE, you know? Yeah. But yeah, it was a pretty dangerous spot. I don't know whether to blame the person who set up the tables, which I do. The person who jumped, which I don't, or the person on the table that braced and lifted up their knee as thing was about to land on their knee. Sammy G. Because he did. Well, I would have thought Sammy uh, G. He braced, he went out, bent his knees. Sammy G, before he even got on the tables, would have said, bro, the tables ain't in the right place at all. Like, I mean, yeah. he's like yeah. experienced enough jumping off ladders. Exactly. He should have refused to get on the table and been like, ah, move the fucking table closer. And like, you know, you know I'm the biggest Sting fan, obviously. No disrespect to Sting as well. The table, if anything, the table should have been even closer because the guy isn't in his prime. He can't jump as far as Sammy G and Darby Allen and the rest. Well, I don't know if, like, I don't know if the spot was actually planned or if Sting just took it on himself. Like, May, yeah, because it, it was quite a. Uh, the crowd were pretty good in this match, like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it might have been the case of, oh fucking hell, man, the energy's high here, man. I I need to do something. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me because he knows he's coming to the end of his career, like so those little adrenaline shots yeah. you get are getting few and far between, I suppose. And he's like, I might as well split my face open before I like, I'm dead. I mean it was brilliant the way he did it where he climbed up the ladder and went, No no. Yeah. Me. I was like, I popped for it. I was like, Go on. <laughs> yeah, so did I mate, but all I could think about is You ain't gonna make it. <laughs> yeah. Gonna make it. You know what I mean? That's all I could think, bro. All I could think about. Yeah. I thought, like, when he went like that, I thought they were gonna, like, Darby would have dropped down and then realized and went, oh, shit. Go on then, bro. Or at least the dropped down. Go on. But Darby did hold the ladder in place. If he didn't do that, he would have been even worse because the ladder would have went like that. What he should have done, in hindsight, is when Darby jumped down, is he should have grabbed the side of the ladder. That he just climbed down from and lifted it up. Yeah. So the ladder went like ah, closer, closer, closer. Now he can fucking make it. Mm-hmm. I mean, like the whole spot where a ladder's lifted and then they jump through the table together, like do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's right. But overall, it was an okay show, man. It was a, uh, it was an half decent show this week. Yeah, brilliant. Always love even though- things like that. Said big sting mark. So. Yeah, but even though all my matches were rated like. Oh, it was, it was a good match. It was a good match. It was an okay match, and the main event was pretty great. Like overall, generally, it was a pretty good show. You know what I mean, hey, overall, but, all around this week, AEW was good. Even Rampage, and I say that because I I normally hate Rampage. I don't know why. Mate, Rampage. The opening match was incredible. Yeah, Rampage is really good this week. That's what I'm saying. Normally, I hate it. Like, I don't know why. I've just got this thing against Rampage. I don't know. I think it's just because for some reason I don't want to note that day. <laughs> Possibly, mate. Possibly. But anyway, that's all we got for Dynamite. So we are now going to move on to Rampage. <laughs> right up my nostril. Uh, so Dawsey's going to kick off this. First. It was uh, Claudio versus Commander in a Ring of Honor title match. Claudio Sick match. Sick match. Oh, um, mate, it was a brilliant match. Props to Claudio for being such a big guy, but always maybe able to look, make the little wrestlers look good, and himself look good, and it being believable. Yeah. But, um. Yeah. Ring of Honor title match. 
uh, half um, man they're coming off five in a row wins in Ring of Honor. So uh, that was the justification for him getting a title match. Yeah. Uh, half Nelson on the counter. Uh, half Nelson slam, sorry, on the counter. Gets two for Claudio. Beasty move. I haven't seen it for a while. A half Nelson slam. Yeah. Uh, one of my, well, full Nelson slam, a little bit better. Like, I think um, Big Bill used a full Nelson slam the other week. Yeah. Uh, arm drag leaping off the top down onto Claudio by Commander. Uh, Hurricanrana counters top rope power bomb by Commander. Uh, Twisted Bliss to the outside by Commander. Shooting Star Press on the barricade by Commander. Kind of struggled on that mm. going across the barricade. Don't know whether the the matting on it was slippy or what, but uh, still look good. Alexander um, Hendon with, with his little tissue. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, leap in. Uh, I've said that. Yep. DDT off the top by Commander was nice. Uh, double jump Phoenix Splash gets two for Commander. European uppercut catching Commander coming off the top for a knockout. Claudio wins. I went with Commander Man of the Match. Commander Man of the Match. I had a book. I had one more. I had six. I had right. six focus. 30. No, just six. Yeah, good match. Real good, real good opener. Brilliant match. title match, always nice. Claudio sick, Commander sick. Uh, you gonna go with the next one? Yeah, man. Next match was uh, almost a squash match. Yeah, yeah, and it was Sean Spears versus Blade. My notes are pretty good on this now. The ten chant, Butch attacking on the outside. Luther's press by Sean Spears, then the C4 finished. You yeah. got much more than that? Because uh, honest, slam on the apron by Spears. And that's it. Yeah, Blade Man of the Match. Uh, I almost Spears Man of the Match. Yeah, it's very um very zero moment for me, man. It was just a basic standard match, wasn't it? Like you'd see at a house show, basically. Yeah, it was a bit crap. I quite enjoyed it. I like I like Sean Spears, although I do feel like he has basically left WWE to stop being 10, to go to AEW, to become the chairman for a month, to just become 10 all over again. Yeah. Yeah. It, like, yeah. Not. I love him. I love him. Yeah. On our promos and his comedy and everything, it's awesome. Yeah. But I just don't feel like he's ever going to progress. No. I feel like he's like the forever put over guy and never the never the king, like Jimmy. Yeah. He's never he's never ever gonna have like a world title. He's never gonna be yeah. the TNT t- champion. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, it's a little bit it's a little bit gutting okay. as well because he, he is real good, Sean Spears. Mm-hmm. You know. Unless they can do find him a good Unless they can find him a good tag team partner and end up with a beer money. I don't know about but, beer money, but I reckon Sean Spears. But like James Storm and Bobby Roode became better singles wrestlers after being in beer yeah. money. Like, I mean, that's what I mean. Sean Spears and Brian Cage. Yeah, because they're here. Not just the hair. They've both got, like, no matter what they do, if Brian Cage grows a beard, he still looks like a baby. Yeah. Sean Spears, if he grows a beard, if he dyes his face, if he does whatever, he still looks like a baby. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're never going to get away from it. So they need to do something to capitalize on it. And I think they would be a good team in it. It would be, actually, mate. And Sean Spears, like Brian Cage, ain't great on the promos, but like we said, Spears is great. So, boom. Yeah. And they could teach each other a little bit. I mean, like, not so much Sean Spears is going to learn a great deal from Brian Cage, but there's, there's always something to learn. Do you know what I mean? But oh, yeah. definitely Brian Cage, I think he got a lot to learn from Sean Spears, you know? Yeah, definitely. Because Sean Spears is a very, very qualified technical wrestler. I guess they would be remember? a good tag team champion as well, actually. They, if, they, think they if they win, they would gather. They'd be formidable, wouldn't they? Yeah. And next up we had the promo for the Owen Hart tournament. And it's Samoa Joe, Roderick Strong, Will Hobbs, Dustin, Juice Robinson and Ricky Starks. They are all fighting each other. 
the single yeah, respected. Aubrey Matthews. Huh? Have you noticed in this tournament, most of them are the end of the three rematches from the past. From the past, like yeah. Rival, like rivalry as well, like like proper rematches. Yeah. Not like they had a one-off match on Dynamite, like they're proper rivalries in there from the past, like. Yeah. Well, it's mad because obviously Samoa Joe and CM Punk and Ricky Starks and Will Hobbs. Yeah. So it's going to be Samoa Joe or, or CM Punk versus somebody I either one of those I don't believe is ready to be up that spot. No. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, why the hell wasn't it finished off with Samoa Joe versus, versus CM Punk? I don't know. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? It's crazy. Make people wait for the wait that little bit longer. We've waited since 2004, as it is. Exactly. Is it time I mean? to build it? Yeah, but yeah, I'm a bit, I'm a bit disappointed with the the brackets in this tournament. I was a bit disappointed in the fact that the tournament was too small and the brackets. Yeah, but it was the same last year though. It was the same last year, and I think we complained about I, the same I, thing. I understand that, but for me, it's not a tournament unless there's sixteen beat sixteen in there at least. You know what I mean? I'm not being funny, right? AEW have got all this broadcast time now, right? They've got all this. I don't want to. Not not new technology, but they've got new ideas, new gimmicks. It's like, why not actually do something where they talk about, well, numbers actually matter. Right, make a league where numbers actually matter. Do you know what I mean? Do it, like, work out on a schedule over, like, a year and a half, something like that, or maybe a year, but it needs to be long. Keep it in the background. It doesn't need to be a focal point. It can just roll over, roll over. People get eliminated till there's 16 people left. Till there's 16 people at the top of that league. Those yeah. 16 went to that tournament, they're picked out of a hat, job fucking done. Do you know what I mean? Like the continuity yeah. there would be incredible, you know? Yeah. And it can it can be for a year-long storyline amongst all that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Good talking about it, man. Woo! So we can. You can have that one. Again. Okay. Anyway, we'll move on, yeah? Uh, yeah, yeah, go on. Uh, QT and Johnny Insert versus Matt and Brothers A. Matt Hardy, that is. Uh, reverse Green Bay Slam by Johnny. With the singing yeah. Harley, whatever her name is, before the match. Yeah. The one which was meant to do a shit rap, but it actually did a pretty good one. It was pretty fucking sick. Uh, Brother Isaiah steals the HBK bit when he dives out the ring and puts his arm around Harley Quinn and she doesn't realise and then turns around and goes, oh. Yeah. Seth Rollins literally done it last week on Raw with Rhea Ripley. Yeah. Um, slide effect, uh, slingshot bomb by Hardy. Nice. Zay launches off Hardy's back to the outside, kind of like Whisper in the Wind, but a splash instead of a jumping kick. Uh, Johnny Hitch Starship Pain, not sure what he's calling it now. I suppose his finisher is into it here too. Um, oh, Johnny and last QT. Name this group. Generic okay. move. Uh, Johnny yeah. and QT win. I went with Hardy Man or Ash. I went with Johnny last name. After the match, Ethan stops them attacking, but he kind of gets outnumbered, and Billy and the Acclaim make the save. I'm a bit ashamed of myself that I put Johnny last name as the man of the match, but you know. that's what you felt. That's what you felt. Five moments. Uh, just a two for me on that one. Um, next up, we had a promo: Sheeta, Ty Valkyrie, hype and build. Then we had Uter Omega build, and then we had time for the main match okay. and page. That match, which was Taya Valkyrie, Taya, Taya Valkyrie, Taya Valkyrie versus Hikaru Shida, who is like up there for one, like for my one of my favorite female wrestlers. Not keen on her ring gear now. Really yeah. not keen on her ring gear. So it, like she needs that fluffy leg, man. Yeah. You know what I mean, don't she? She needs that like that. 
She needs that curtain on her leg still. Yeah. Yeah, I you agree. Know? She we... doesn't keep the one piece. No. No, she looks like um look at a bit like Emmy Sakura in the way she she's got her ring here, but Emmy Sakura pulled it off. Yeah. Emma, Emmy Sakura's littler and a little bit more stumpy. She does tall and skinny. So it jumpsuits don't look good on tall and skinny, man. No. Uh anyway, getting into the match. Was it for the belt? Uh no, there is no belt. There is no belt because it's not um the belt holder. Yeah, anyway, sloppy Harakarana by Shida, uh, leg into the post by Taya Valkyrie times three on the outside, Shida holding a knee. Nice. Jewel submission by Taya Valkyrie. What? What? Nice jewel. Oh, where she had like a leg trap down there and she was trapping her arm as well. I don't know what it was called. Uh, suplex on the outside by Shida. Meteora off the apron by Shida. <clears throat> Running elbow as well gets two count. Shin breaker using a corner. Double knee into the corner by Tyre Valkyrie. Shida pin roll up. Back and forth pin. Just before, there was back and forth pins and Shida makes a roll up and wins. Shida man of the match, two moments. Yep, agreed on both. Uh, not a great match, to be honest. It was quite slow. Um, after the match, Ty Valkyrie's pissed off. Yeah, she's not going to mark her, is it? Not really, nah. no. It's not, um, it's, it's weird. It is weird because, like, she come in to kind of, to a bit of an impact. It's like, yeah. oh, yeah, Ty Valkyrie's here, but it wasn't like, fuck, it's Ty Valkyrie, she's in AEW. It wasn't anything like, like a Brian Daniel or a CM Punk or, you know, it wasn't anything yeah. like that. But it's like, it's like it's not up there, but it's it's kind of there. But it's like now yeah. where she's losing all the time and like the storyline seems to be fizzling a bit. I get the feeling that she might drop right the way down. Mm-hmm. And people and people be like, ah, oh, well, she's got to earn her way. It's like she does not have to earn her way. Do you know what I mean? Oh. She's at the top of our li- that that roster. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. You know, she's fucking well above Ruby so uh, Ruby Soho. You know what I mean? Yeah. Exactly. So yeah, it's a little bit, it's a little bit disappointing on her on her direction. But yeah, two moments for me, and I went with Shida Man of the Match. Yep, agreed on both, like the said. Yeah, that's all I got for Rampage. Is, uh, there's no more. We've run out of words. All the words are gone, just like ours. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know where I haven't got that. Yes. But now. Because he's going to fill me in on what happened on Collision. Because I fell asleep whilst watching it. Twice. First off, we had uh, the Owen Hart, Hart tournament, the hype with all the competitors. I'm not going to list them, because he already has. Uh, and then we had MJF making his Collision debut. I watched this Again, one. Hit Moss, Moss, who is also making his AEW debut. Uh, heat seeker MJF pulls up from the cover to well, heel move. Uh, the bell lock MJF wins. MJF man of the match. And then I felt <laughs> that's it. No, I, I watched it. I wasn't expecting uh, after the match. MJF gets a promo, calls out anyone from Hamilton. The fat guy, Mario Keller. Yeah, the fat guy starts to come out, and then Ethan Page comes out. And calls out MGF. Uh because he's technically from there, isn't he? He is from there. That's yeah. where he's born. Okay, fair enough. Uh AEW title, Ethan Page versus MJF. After uh, a very that the crowd sapped up like it was chocolate. Well, it was a dark match, wasn't it? Let's be fair. It was, but I'm I said a promo. The promo that oh. uh, Ethan cut the fans yeah. sucked, sucked, like it was chocolate. Yeah, yeah. The Ethan Page, sick. Fair play. He's a wicked promo guy. Oh, he's he's wicked wicked yeah. Uh, Ethan shoulder tackle off the apron, but sells a knee that MGF has worked on. Um. Leaping Cutter by Ethan was sick. Leaping Hurricane by Ethan, then a power slam 
Twist of Fate by Ethan, Super Power Slam by Ethan, Heat Seeker, MGF wins, but I went with Ethan, Man of the Match, and I had four moments. I had exactly the same. Then we had, but yeah, decent match, nice hometown boy uh, thing for the, the crowd and good for TV. And if you, any of you haven't seen it, go out and check out Ethan's toy blog. It's very entertaining. Take you back to your childhood of all the times you bought, like, Krang from the Turtles and, like, you know, Biker Mice from Mars and all that stuff. But check it out. It's good. It's on YouTube. Free. Uh, own Hat Tournament. Hobbs versus Dustin Rhodes. Uh, QT interferes, allowing, uh, throwing Dustin into the ring post and busts him open. Uh, Crossroads and a pile driver gets two for Dustin. Code Red gets two. Spinebuster gets one for Hobbs. Spinebuster after QT takes a cheap shot while the ref is distracted. Hobbs wins. I went with Dustin, man of the match. I agree. Then I fell asleep. I two, I two moments. I didn't, didn't write any moments. Um, still like Hobbs' is asc- the ascension, but like you said, I still think it's a bit early for him to win. Yeah. The- like, the Booker Hobbs gimmick didn't work. His lackluster promos on the QTV promos are not very good. You know? But QT Marshall shines every time. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Will Hobbs, though, not so much. Like, it's like when he first came into it, and I was like, do you know what they need to do with Will Hobbs? Is they need to keep him that. That baby face for quite a while. Keep him, keep him that that hero guy that's like, oh, he's come from college. Like, do you know what I mean? He's an amateur wrestler. Like, you know, he's built his way up, blah, blah, blah. He needed to stay that. Like, but then as soon yeah. as he started going all the time, it was like, what are you doing, you fucking dickhead? It's like, your career is now fucked. Do you know what I mean, where'd you go from here? You can't just be a bad guy. Like, yeah. you're not believable. Like, do you know what I mean? You know, he's yeah. just not. Does, like, is that just me, or does he does he come across like the bad guy gimmick for him doesn't work? Um, I just think it's just getting used to it, mate. I just think he needs time to. If he's gonna do it, he's just gonna. It's just gonna take time. Well, I don't like this whole force of it. I can see him winning the fucking tournament. You know, shouldn't do. Not against CM Punk. CM Punk's eventually gonna put fucking someone over, haven't he? Yeah. You know, and I don't mean by via accident, like where he hurts himself, so he has to lose the fucking match. You know, genuinely giving someone else a win for the sake of the push off the back of his name, like he should be doing. Yeah. Finish off with the word cock. Uh, then we had Joe versus Stark's hype. And then we had Miro versus Anthony Henry. Uh, I think he's one of the warrior horsemen. J.D. Drake. Another very underutilized wrestler in AEW. Uh, he's pretty much doing work on Ring of Honor now. I think. Yeah, I think he's wrestling more on Ring of Honor now. Well, that's shit. Suppose they want me to subscribe to ROH. Not fucking happening, Tony. <laughs> um, overhead belly to be- belly by Miro. Gut wrench suplex, nice choke slam by Miro, which you don't usually see out of him. Uh, pump kick, game over, Miro wins, Miro man of the match, squash match, but I said that three moments because the moves off beast. Yeah, well, that's why we're here for to rate him, mate. Some of my moments come on like where someone fucks up, like depending on how big the fuck up is. If it's a big enough fuck up, it gets a moment. I mean, if, if it's like, like the glitch by 2.0, got a moment, you know? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to see where they go with Miro. I'm liking this slow build hype again. I'm just hoping they don't. Get mixed up with the promos and start adding worship in a mud monster or something. No, he'll he'll start identifying as like a foot or something next. <clears throat> I am now I am now redeeming my my birth name to foot, left foot to be exact. Now give me a tank. Then we had Tony in ring with Bullet Club Gold and the Ass Boys. Bullet Club, uh, Tony tells the Bullet Club they are bad from ringside for the Ricky Starks match. Tony, 
Shivani. Okay. Uh, then we had Lexi with Punk, FTR, and Starks. Uh, basically dissing them back for the clever and the ass boys, that is. Punk said something of, Punk said something about what's in his bag. If you want it, can take it. So who are the ass boys? Jay White. Oh, okay. What was in the bag? Oh, the belt? Yeah. But the, that he's not the champion of? Yeah. Cool. Uh, he did say, ironically, that MJF's carrying around the toy belt, even though we all think the toy belt's in his bag. <laughs> yes. We, are, we don't think that it's in the bag. We know it's in the yeah. bag. You know. Uh, next up was the Owen Hart tournament match between Starks and Juice. Juice Robinson, that is. Uh, Starks trips over Juice when, you know, the bit where they do the Irish rip and you drop down. Starks yeah. tripped over him and bounced his face off the middle row. Not quite sure if it was a botch or fuck up. But, uh, yeah, a botch or they planned it. I might have a look at that. Uh, Scoop into the ropes by Juice. DDT by Starks. Snake Eyes and a DDT gets two for Starks. Texas Cloverleaf by Juice. Spear gets two for Juice. Spear by Starks. Starks gets a sneaky pin. Starks wins. Starks man of the match. I woke up for that. I seen that bit. Juice Robinson's spear was absolute pants, wasn't it? Yeah. It was like one of the worst spears ever. Like, like whoever the female wrestler that's doing the spear at the moment, that we're like, that is terrible. Hi. She did better. Who? Taya. Oh, yeah, Taya Valkyrie. Yeah. Yeah, she hits a better spear than uh, Juice Robinson. Yeah. Um, He's going to be fucked when he fights someone else, though, isn't he? Like, <laughs> the only thing he's known for is screaming Ricky. Like, that's what people remembered him for. Yeah. You know? Justin! It's not going to have the same, like. Yeah. Um, oh, my God. Yeah. After the match, Bullet Club come out, and Punk and FTR come out to make the save. Then we had Super Sexy Maxi with Christian and Lucha interrupted by Sean Spears. Says he, want, yeah. he wants to address the champ. Christian steps in the way and goes, you are addressing the champ. So there's a little uh, rivalry about to start with them. I think it'll only be like a one week when no luck. I mean, I don't think it'll be a... I don't know. Might, he might get a title shot out of it. I think you'll get a title shot out of it, but then you'll lose, and that'll be it. It won't be like a long program. Yeah. Maybe he'll, maybe a two-week promo. Like. Yeah. Um, where was I? Uh, yeah, next up we had Stat versus Lady Frost for the TBS title. A Stat almost drops Frost on the vertical suplex while she kind of does. They have to redo it. Uh, Mission Yuku Driver gets two for Stat. Uh, German by Frost was nice. DDT, then a running knee gets two. Saturday Night Fever, Stat wins. Stat man of the match, just the win moment. I didn't write any moments. I didn't see that match. I was asleep. You can do it in your sleep, no? No. No. AEW can make me sleep, though, with their 50 hours of wrestling. <laughs> uh, Lexi. Super sexy Lexi again with Andrade. You stole my mask. You stole my mask. And I assume the rest was you stole my mask in Spanish or Mexican. Yeah. Uh, House of Black appear on the screen behind him. Uh, holding the mask all in good time. All in good time. And lights so they back up. Mask. Those bastards. They did. There was a lot of speculation on the, on the Real Wrestling Show last week about whether or not they did actually steal it or not, from my behalf. Turns out they did. Those bastards! Turns out I was right. Again. Well, I knew you were right, mate. I just wanted to add content to the blog. Yeah. Too much Dr. Rue, bro. Too much Dr. Rue. Come on, yeah. homie. Next up, we had... Utah, this and Omega, saying, 
I'm sort of beating you with your nerves, but it's not. We need to destroy you. We need to break your confidence. We need to break you as a whole. Break him a new like, hole. Break him, yeah. Break you as a I whole. Uh, and then there was a bit of blood and gets hyped as well in, in that. Then CM Punk gets a big entrance to come on commentary. Who do you think he is, JR? Mm. JR. did more. I, I didn't see it. I know he does a promo at the end as well. I'm not interested, but, you know. Does he? I think so. No, he doesn't. Oh, I thought you finished as a show off. Seems like something CM Punk would do. No. Uh, so, anyway, CM Punk, because he's going to be fighting the winner of the, Owen, the next Owen Hat tournament match, which is the main event of Collision Z, which was Samoa Joe versus Roderick Strong, which is a brilliant match, fair play. As it would be, because Samoa Joe's in it. And Roderick Strong was a pretty good hand as well, I think, myself. Um, although I do believe that like, MJF completely bodied him when he called him a generic white guy, because it's kind of true. Yeah. Generic he white wrestler. Yeah. Because yeah. he is a bit... He is just a wrestler, really, isn't he? Yeah. Preset character on game. Change <laughs> face. Add preset moves. Roderick Strong. Yeah. John Spears. Yeah. QT Marshall. Um, keep going and going. Well, don't shut up. I shall. Uh, you're in the corner by Joe, which he always does, but it's beast. A uh, big backbreaker by Roddy, then a sick kick gets two. Olymp- Olympic slam gets two for Roddy, which is sick. Nice to see you used again, man. Uh, yeah. Who else? No, I think Willow uses it as well. There is someone else. I think though, I'm not sure if it's Willow. Yeah, it's definitely a woman's wrestler. Oh, let's do all the um, airdrops going past on their bikes, little pricks. Um, Heel Kirch puts out Roddy, completely takes him out. Joe wins. I went Roddy man of the match. I had four moments. Left on watch back up and the Ricky Starks match. Uh, Joe grabs a chair. Feds come out. Um, Hunt Greg grabs a chair. It looks like they're going to go for it. And then Joe runs in the, slides back in the ring. Orange crush onto the chair by uh, Joe onto Roderick Strong. And then there's a runner. There's a runner? Yeah, like sort of dives out the ring. He's like, uh, backing off, you know, like a heel. Like Joe does. Yeah. Uh, Paul comes out because obviously he's best mates with uh, Roddy and they get a stretcher out and they're stretching him out and like, Adam Cole's obviously a bit straw and CM Punk's kind of like <laughs> What? He's like looking down as if it's his fault like saying Ah oh, right okay okay yeah I knew it ended with CM Punk doing something. Yeah. I knew, it was, knew it, the last thing on the show was about CM Punk because I read it. That was all I got. Yeah. CM Punk. Dickhead. Yeah. It's all about him. It's yeah, that's all about that pillock. Ends up with Roderick Strong getting stretched out. Yeah. Yeah. We have the Joe versus Punk rematch. I gotta watch it back, man. I know. I don't like the bracket. You got Punk vs. Samoa Joe, and then you got Will Hobbs versus Ricky Starks. Which has been done to death already, recently. Yep. With the FTW turning hands and all that. Yeah, that's what I mean. If it wasn't so recent, I don't mind them redoing rivalries, but it was. it's literally so fresh, and it was a long rivalry as well. It wasn't like a one month one. It was a good three month one. Like I mean, it wasn't long ago. No, exactly. If it was a bit longer, then yeah, not so bad. Like to I me, mean, but it still feels yeah. quite like as a storyline was quite a good storyline as well. You know what I mean, so it was like it was quite memorable. Yeah. You know? So to bring it's it back now, it's like ah, oh, why are you re- why are you revisit it so early? Like? Yeah. You know. But for me personally, right, I think if it ended up being Samoa Joe and CM Punk in the final. 
they literally had a win-win situation because if Joe won, then they would have had big hype around it and CM Punk probably would have got the whole sympathy thing because of the rivalry from years. CM Punk won, people wouldn't be so pissed because it's against Samoa Joe. Like It's like, yeah. you know, yeah, the rivalry is there. So to beat to beat Joe, it gives him that kind of, well, yeah, I am the fucking man because I just beat Joe, you know? And I don't think... And now he's going to be Ricky Starks or fucking William Hobb. Well, that's the thing as well. I don't think even one of them are going to get a five-star match out of CM Punk. I don't think CM Punk is going, to, is going to be able to get a five-star match out of them either. I mean, normally, it, like if it was if it was a veteran like Kurt yeah, Angle, then yeah, you'll get a five star match out of anyone. But I don't think CM Punk is that wrestler anymore. No, Maybe ten Kurt years ago. No, because if he fucks up a move and someone tells him that he fucked up a move, he doesn't want to believe it. Like, what yeah. kind of a teacher? What kind of a kind of a teacher can that be? You can't, like, Jimmy. Just go back off to MMA, man, and like get your brains bashed in. MMA, I'll never have him back again, bro. After the last one, they should never have had him back in wrestling after he like. Disparaged it like he did. Do you know what I mean? Scumbag. Don't belong, mate. He doesn't belong in wrestling. Not even AEW. He doesn't belong in wrestling. Do you know what I mean? Wrestling is not a single man's game, bro. CM Punk is all about CM Punk. It's all it's ever been. Do you know what I mean? Oh, well, what works for me? Well, what works for everybody else around you, you prick? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, I'm a, I'm a big CM Punk fan. fan. CM Punk fan. Any more? Got any more? Got any more? Oh, no, that is it, mate. I've got a bit of news, though. I've got you a little bit of news. Go for you, it, first, then. Watch. You do yours, because I haven't written any down. Okay. And you might have already. Uh, Doodle Face doesn't get his contract renewed by AEW. Uh, <laughs> French, isn't it? French. That was it, yeah. I wonder why that is. He was good. Never yeah. had a match. He was great. Well, he never had a wrestling trainer either. No. He was just a doodle. Just there, because he had doodles on his face. Yeah. He looked like a, a gang affiliate, apparently. He looked like a, a bloody Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle gone wrong. Yeah. Looks like a, an like incest, a mural in the back of a comic an incest, shop. Like an incest Teenage Mutant Hero Turtle. Uh, Weird. But anyway, uh, as of this blog being recorded, we were approaching 75,000 tickets sold for Wembley without a match being announced. 74,888,000. Yep. Oh, One thing that. I will say, obviously I'm on uh, the Facebook forum for uh, uh, the actual AEW All-In 20. 23 like just for that event like um a lot of people trying to sell tickets as well sell them on not for a profit just either they can't make it or some people have upgraded they bought cheap tickets and now they've bought better tickets and they're trying to sell their cheaper tickets or the other way around they've realized oh shit it's quite expensive so i want to sell my expensive tickets because i've bought cheaper ones but you know not too much but you know that still, happens still let's say out of 74,000, there's 20,000 people that are trying to sell tickets. There's still 50,000 without a single match being called. Not a That's single a match. match. Fuck That's you, Vince. That is the thing. Not a single match being announced. Vincent. Not a single match. If we, if, if we do end up with, like, Mark Andrews versus, like, Sting as the main event or something, the people are going to be pissed. They have to be a big, <laughs> big match now. I'd love it. No, they do need to have... They, they need to have continuity in the TV show. Yeah. So whatever storylines are going on, same thing needs to happen. Mm-hmm. You know, storylines need to continue because people will be pissed if it, if it doesn't. Uh, ba- Bailey says she's too old to follow Sasha Banks. I can't remember her, her name now. Mercedes mm-hmm. Monet. Monet. Monet, yeah. Mercedes Monet. She's too old to follow her to Japan. But she said she wants to fight her in a match in Japan. Yeah, but she said she's too old to actually go and wrestle in Japan full time. Right, okay. um, plus, she could wrestle her in Japan in WWE. They do go to Japan. Yeah. Um, 
Kingston, Eddie Kingston wins the New Japan Pro Wrestling Strong title. That was one of my newses. Uh, Diamante is now full time with AEW. She's got a full time contract before she was on a you know, like a bit of a pay pay play. Okay. Well, she was on a short sit like or a short sit like getting renewed every three months or whatever. Now she's on a proper full time contract. And Carlito says he would join AEW if they offered him a six-figure contract. And what I said to Carlito was, go and fuck yourself, you're not that good. Yeah. You know, one of the better news, Willow Nightingale lost her belt uh, in the same tournament as Eddie Kingston winning his belt against someone called Ju- Julia, spelled G-U-I-L-I-A. Okay. But yeah, she's lost her title. Unfortunately, forty-five days as champion. Well, to be honest, she wasn't meant to win. It was she was like in the booking style. It was it was meant to be Mercedes Monet won it. So yeah, she's absolutely. not obviously. I think the reason behind it is she can't commit to New Japan fully. Obviously, her commitments lay with AEW and Ring of Honor. Yeah, but still, you know, she held it with grace. You know, she, yeah, exactly. Uh, I don't know if she defended it too often elsewhere. Like, she defended once on AEW? Yeah, once on AEW. Yeah, but I don't know if she defended it elsewhere, but she carries herself well. Do you know what I mean? Like, you could put a belt on her now in AEW. It, well, yeah, exactly. I mean, she's still very green, but you could put her in a main event and not know she's very green. Yeah. You know what I mean? And the like, if, you like, stuck her in, if you stuck her in there against Tyler Valkyrie and you were a brand new wrestling band, you wouldn't, I probably would pick Higher as the the vet, uh, as the green the way she's especially if she does a spear like that anyway. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my last bit of news is John Cena surprise appears of money in the bank. Obviously, Triple H knew he was going to go in, but John Cena neglected to mention that he was going to drop in the whole screw the office. WrestleMania belongs here, and I gave you. I came here to give you a voice. It was a wicked promo. You should watch it. But basically, he says uh, London deserves WrestleMania, which is true. It's been going on for before AEW started. The only reason they're doing it is because AEW. Yeah, you know, I know a lot of people are saying it because of the Wembley thing, but mate, John Cena done that off his own back. You could tell Triple H was. WWE don't do anything off their own back, brother. Uh, mate, you'd be surprised, man. You would be surprised. Nah, I'm not surprised. Vince McMahon wrote down every single word, and John Cena, like he always does, read it word for word. Do you know what I mean? Like, months and months, mate, this would have been happening. Do you know what I mean? Months. Yeah. As soon as AEW went, Wembley, he would have gone, right then, those fucking pricks. They weren't supposed to be in business more than a year. Do you know what I mean? We'll show them. We'll do a WrestleMania, and we'll sell the front, front row tickets for a thousand million pounds. Do you know what I mean? No, I mean, it's like, like I said, look at Prince of the, the Clash of the Castle. That was, that's a stadium event. That was over 75,000. Fuck us. Fuck them. Fuck WWE, mate, and all their fucking snidey, snaky ways, mate. Fuck those guys. Triple H was, so, anyway, Triple H was backtracking like a motherfucker on it. He was like, well, you know, I'd love to, but as I keep saying, it's hard when... We've got to do this. We've got to get all the right parts and the right. Like he was prop backtracking, like it's not going to happen. Yeah, oh, exactly. Right. Just like you say something like it's not going to happen because it's planned that it's happening already. It's, it's like it's probably you can buy, probably buy tickets for it now. That's what WWE do, mate. Do you know what I mean? They you have to book tickets like four years in advance. Like do you know what I mean? It's in the schedule. Read it. It's there. Fucking bullshit, mate. I fucking hate WWE. They suck, bro. They literally like. Watching a dark side of the ring, right? It makes me hate the company even more. Do you know what I mean? Every episode I watch, I hear about the territories and how Vince went in and he raped the fucking territories. It's like yeah. you're a fucking scumbag, mate. You ruined, you ruined what wrestling was for massive communities and you monopolized it. And now you're just a greedy, fucking horrible, old, dirty man. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Don't chill out with CM Punk somewhere. Fuck Vince. Fuck Vince. Yeah, I've got no more news. You've made me quite angry now. Uh, see the scene coming out of your head, bro. I know <laughs> it's quite funny, that is mine. 
Um, but yeah, I've been Big Z. I've been Dozy. And we have been the Real Wrestling Show. Dash blog. And uh, you can check out all our other videos that we have online, which are Greenhouse, Mountain Dice Memoirs. Greenhouse is pretty defunct now, but you might get some ideas off it, Tony. You can. Um, yeah. What else we got? Merchandise Memoirs. Uh, backstage. Yeah, backstage back. Back. We got I will videos. get the Clash of the Castle videos up this week. I get kept get, get him because Big Z had videos, but now he definitely doesn't. So I can't start. There will be a few. There's not much, but there's a few videos of that and a couple of other stuff. Merchandise memoirs too will be coming soon. I've just got to actually get my merchandise out, and it's a bit hard being in a cast. And yeah. I also have some old videos from live events, which I've come across. Yeah, check it all out, man. Check it all out. So, yeah, thank you for watching. Thank you for liking. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for anybody who's helped us do this blog. Um, we'll be back with another episode, which will be 200 and something. I can't remember what this one is. I want to say 212, but I'm probably wrong. 213, it's maybe. It's close to that. It's not that area. Yeah, it's too many. Too many. But, uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and we shall catch you next week. Peace. How do you stop this thing? <laughs>